The latest probes bring NASA's fleet of Earth observing instruments to 18. First off the launch pad in February was GPM, or the Global Precipitation Measurement Mission, says NASA Earth scientist Tom Wagner. What that's going to do is improve our understanding of precipitation. It'll be able to measure how much snow is in the atmosphere, and that'll overall improve our understanding of rainfall. GPM was followed by the Orbiting Carbon Observatory, or OCO2. Wagner says this is important considering that carbon dioxide, or CO2, emissions are a primary driver of global warming. One of the most important things with carbon dioxide is we need to know where it's coming from, but we need to know where it goes. Does it get taken up by the ocean, for example? Is it being released by thawing of the Arctic? And if we want to figure out where the planet's going to be, say, in 50 or 100 years, those are the kinds of processes we need to understand. Also in the last year, two instruments were mounted on the International Space Station. It's the first time we're putting instruments on the space station to look down at Earth. And the space station represents this incredible platform because it has things like a lot of power. It can handle large instruments with a lot of mass. One instrument is called Rapid Scat. From its fixed position outside the station, it documents how fast winds are moving on the surface of the ocean, providing data which can improve climate models and weather prediction. The other is known as CATS, or the Cloud Aerosol Transport System. Which is going to shoot lasers down to the atmosphere to look at the relationship between like pollutants and other particles in cloud formation. The next satellite scheduled for liftoff this week is SMAP, or Soil Moisture Active Passive. Its focus is the water cycle, critical to life on the planet. Wagner says SMAP and the other tools will monitor the health of Earth's vital systems. And the simple fact is this, the Earth is all interconnected. And if you want to understand it, you need to make measurements all over the place all the time so you can get a total picture of what's going on. And satellites is one of the best ways to do that. Wagner says the vast archive of data streaming from satellites benefits weather forecasters and informs climate models. NASA data also help farmers and ocean and land managers make better decisions in response to global warming. Roseanne Skirbel, VOA News, Washington.